They first told us that the stroke had hit his speech center. And then the next day they told us it was a much bigger stroke than what they thought. Their best case scenario was that he would be in a facility for the rest of his life with no use of his right side, um, no use of his left leg. He would hopefully understand us, maybe. He wouldn't be able to talk and he would have his memories and hopefully recognize us. Miriam, daughter, daughter. So Miriam was the only thing that he said at Methodist for anything until we got in the ambulance to transfer to tear. And he looked at me and he said, I love you. And I said, you've been holding out that whole time, haven't you? And he did that. He got home four days before she was born. And his biggest challenge was... Speaking well? Speaking anything? Speaking. Walker, Kane, and now again. <laughs> Um, Kurt. <sighs> un -cur um, um, unrestricted. Unrestricted. I think the first time I actually heard aphasia was at Tear. Um, I had never heard of it before. Aphasia is the loss of language due to the injury to the language centers of the brain. So in your brain, we all have specific parts that control understanding speech and control producing speech. The first time in Hark, the no speech, no anything, yes, no, I don't know. So Hark's a really special place. Um, it's a community center dedicated to giving people with aphasia a space to not only work on their language skills and to work on rewiring that brain, but a space to work on their confidence and to be am amongst people that have aphasia and know aphasia. And it's been shown that having a place like Hark in conjunction with traditional therapy or you know even after traditional therapy is over can help someone with aphasia continue to make those language gains you know years after their stroke a little bit at a time then okay um get more comfortable comfortable um When I first met Matt, um, I think he was, he was still having quite a bit of trouble getting his ideas out in a complete, I know what he would consider a well-formed sentence. I think there's a great community, Hark. I got it. And it's a community that can understand what's going on and we can learn from each other and how to be able to communicate better with each other and be able to share awareness of what aphasia is. Yeah. Any communication is communication. Whether I'm speaking, whether I'm writing, whether I'm pointing to something, it should all be valued as you trying to get a message across to your loved one. Um, and empowering them with that communication so that it's not so um, frustrating when the words don't come. Hark in person, good. Actual people, not screens in stories, but people, oh my God, good. Love the joy and love the you and me talking or no talking 
Fantasia. Good. I see Matt continuing to grow in his service and his leadership to the places that he holds dear. And, you know, starting with his family um, and then expanding to his faith and continuing to expand to in the community. Um, like we how I've seen him grow here um, from being more early in his recovery journey to now where I see him taking a more active role in the conversation it's at Hark and, and to trying to help others engage the way people helped him engage. He spends a lot of time on Hark, four days a week, two to three hours a day, um, which is awesome. His speech has gotten a lot better from it. Um, he volunteers once a week at the Hope Chest, which is a resale shop. So it feels so inspiring to see his progress and I just can't wait to see where he goes in the future. For anybody that just found out that their loved one has aphasia, know that it's hard and it's a lot of work, but it can get better. You just have to be really patient and try and figure out what works. Because there's so many different ways that we can communicate that may not require words. I think the future is bright for Hark. I'd love to see Hark continue to serve people across the Texas area with its virtual services. I'd love to see it continue to bounce back from this pandemic and get more people in the doors and just continue to serve people with aphasia and their caregivers and giving them that hope and that way to communicate at home. And Furthermore, that sense of community that being here gives everyone, from the volunteers to the HARC members to the staff, we're really a part of a community. So from being told the horrible option of being in a facility to where he is now, all I can say is God said no. He, he is a walking, talking, driving miracle. Mm -hmm.